Hello and welcome. I'm Ian Wolfo, and today I am filling a request from Catechus Guilt on the Minecraft forums. Uh, he asked for a tutorial on how to build a combination lock that was order sensitive, and if you pressed a button out of order, then the whole lock would reset. So that's what I built here. Now, over there, we have an iron door guarding the way to some lovely nommy cake. And to get to that, we have to press the right buttons. Now, the correct combination for this door is 2, 1, and 6. And the door should open, uh, thus giving access to lovely cake. If you press any button that is not part of the combination, then the whole thing resets. And also, if you press the correct buttons in the wrong order, so that's 1, 2, and 6, then nothing happens. They must be pressed in the right order. So one, sorry, two, one, and then six, and the door opens. Uh, I've not been able to get it to reset when you press the, when you try and repress the correct buttons. Once they've been pressed once, they're safe to press again. So once you're done, the only way to reset it is to press one of the buttons that is not part of the combination. So I'll show you what we've got out here. Now. Depending on how many buttons you want to be part of your combination will determine how long this is going to be because there's a part of the circuit for every button that's part of the combo. So I have designed this to require three buttons to open. So this is three chunks of circuitry, which I'll show you in a moment. First of all, back here, we have an AND gate and these can have as many inputs as you want. I've designed one of three inputs because I have three buttons that form the combination. And this is the output here. Now, if you don't quite get what an AND gate does, it will take as many inputs as you like, and all the inputs must be on for the output to be turned on. Because in the middle, we have a little piece of wire, which is receiving power from each of these three redstone torches, which are sitting on inverters. So in order to turn off these redstone torches, you must supply power to the back. So once power is being supplied to all three of these pieces of wiring, then this will turn on, which leads over there, up top of the building, and opens the door. So I'll just quickly go show that. Just go through here. Two, one, six. Door opens. Yep. So now the AND gate should have three positive inputs and a positive output. So yep, all three are on, bit in the middle's off, so this is on, which opens the door. Now, since I'm using buttons as my input, not switches, buttons will fire a pulse of energy into a circuit and then dissipate. I had to find a way to retain the energy from the button. So the power goes along here, you can ignore that piece for now and into these little circuits here. Now, I don't know the proper name for this, but I'm just going to call them capacitors because they store a charge. Um, if there's a better name for them, please just tell me in the comments, um, and I'll call them that in future. But for now, these capacitors, the power enters here, goes along to the side, into the rest of the repeater, which boosts the signal, sends it back out, where it will go out there towards the output of the circuit, and back along back through here and back into the repeater. So this forms an infinite loop which keeps the circuit powered. So that's why a button is able to turn on the circuit. Now I also had to have a way to disrupt the power to the circuit because if you press the wrong button then something has to come out here and remove the power. So I've done that with pistons here. So there's a piston back here which when it extends will push a block into this area which breaks the circuits underneath, removing power. So I'm just going to stick that there. As you, you would have heard the door shut over there, and the circuit is now off, and that's purely because of that block coming out into the middle. Now, oh, it's time to get dark. I'll talk for a minute and then sleep. Um, where's the sun? How pretty. I think that's dark enough. It's always good to have a bed when you're building a large project. Building in the dark is not fun. 
So there. Um, anyway, where was I? Yes. I. You may see that every one of the buttons, which is part of the correct sequence, leads both into a capacitor and up into this little bridge that I built leading over the capacitors. And so that's number two, number one. You may also see here that the three switches which do not form port, port part of the combination are just leading directly up into the bridge and do not lead into capacitors. Um, and this number six is the last part of the combo, so again into capacitor and over the top. Now the ones that do not form any part of the combination, just head straight up here, up and over, into a redstone repeater. Now the point of the repeater is twofold, it prevents any power from flowing from another source back along this way because power can only flow one three one way through the repeater. Now it wouldn't actually cause a problem if it headed back, but you still didn't want to cause any accidental feedback problems or power into anything I didn't intend. So it's good practice anyway. Plus it means that when a signal reaches this point in the circuit, you're guaranteed that there's going to be enough power to reach both ends of this track of redstone wiring. So when you press any button that is not part of the correct combination, this lights up and these, this row of blocks with the redstone on top is right above the series of pistons, as you can see. So if power is supplied, yeah, I can supply power from here. So if power is supplied to that row, then all the pistons fire, which breaks every capacitor circuit. So that's great. That explains how the circuit's reset when the wrong button's pressed. But how is the circuit reset when a button is pressed out of order? Well, this here is the first button, number two. This is the first part of the combination. As I've already shown, it leads over there into the capacitor. But if I head up here, let me show you what's happening. It hits a piston. So it doesn't lead anywhere else, the first one. The first one cannot break the circuit. So when the first button is pressed, which I'll go do now, So number two, which is the first part of the combo, press that. You heard the piston fire. The circuit is now on, the capacitor is on, and if you head up here, you see that the piston is now receiving power and has pushed its block out this way. So now, if I were to press two, or sorry, the second part of the combo lock, which is the first button, then the power would flow along into the capacitor and up here, Whereas previously it would have headed underneath there into that track which resets the circuit. Now that this piece of stone is in the way, it can now freely head up to this little bridge I've made over here. And this little bridge is just to avoid interfering with the other redstone wiring. It heads to another piston here. So once the second button is pressed, which I'll go do now, second button which is the first. Hope I'm not confusing you with the numbering. So that capacitor is powered. So is all this. As I said this stone block here is now blocking that path so the circuit can be reset. Power flows up and over the top along this little bridge into a second piston. And the second piston is doing the same things over there. It has prevented this piece of wiring from reaching the the track which disables the sort that resets the lock. So now I can quite happily press the third button in the combination, which is number six. Go and do that now. Door opens. Yep. If you have a look out here, we now have this powered, this is powered, all three capacitors are on. And this wiring up here is just leading to nowhere, since I only need this to do something when the other two buttons have not yet been pressed. And now, if I wanted to have a four button combination lock, I would need to have another piece of wiring come out of here. Oh, not one, not a right I'd have to have another piece of wiring come out of here or in a block that would be here, and it would lead to another piston, which would disable this piece of circuitry for the fourth part of the combination. But this, as I said, is just a three combo lock, so this is all you need. So I'm going to be uploading a map to 
and I will put a link in the description to download it. So you can have a, a play about with this and see what I've done. If you build your own combo log, it will not look exactly the same as this unless you want the same combo. But I hope that makes sense to you. Um, whenever you fire off, whenever you press a button in the right combination, it will enable, or sorry, it will disable the reset on the next button and keep going until you reach the last. If you have any questions about this, just ask me in the comments of the video. Um, feel free to subscribe and comment. I really do like getting feedback. Um, if anyone has any more requests, please just send them to me. I'll do my best to come up with something. Um, hope you like this. Catch you next time.